Hi food lovers, my name is Adrian and I love food. Thank you for joining me again. Today, for our second Cooking with Adrian class, I thought I'd prepare for you guys um, a, a recipe which is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, it's a skinless sausage um, called the Mitch. Now, uh, I was born in, in Romania, in East Europe, uh, in the land of Count Dracula in Transylvania, actually. And um, this recipe, uh, I think, originated somewhere in the Middle East, um, but Romanians sort of changed it up, uh, you know, over the hundreds of years. Uh, and um, so what I'm going to make for you today is um, the Romanian version of, of this uh, recipe. Uh, as I said, it's a recipe that I, um, I, I, I grew up uh, when I, I lived there um, in the early 90s. And, um, you know, I, I guess it's sort of the most popular street food over there. Um, uh, it, it goes very well with, um, with beer. So, you know, um, it's very, very, very popular for um, kids and uh, adults alike. Now, uh, to make this particular recipe, uh, what we have here is um, one kilogram of beef. Mince. Now, the beef mince that I chose is the regular mince with a 20% fat. Now, the reason um, you use this uh, particular version of the mince with, with the more fat is because it, it makes the sausages a bit more soft and more fluffy. Um, if you use the very lean um, beef uh, mince, it, it makes it quite a lot tougher and drier. So as I said, we've got one kilo of, of, of beef mince here with the, the, the regular beef mince, 20% fat. And what we also have is um, 500 grams, half a kilo of regular pork mince. And I guess this is where, you know, the Romanians changed it up because in the Middle East, being Muslim, they don't eat pork. Um, I think this was originally done with mutton. Um, but uh, anyways, as I said, this is um, what we're doing today. Now, what else we have is uh, we got a heap teaspoon of, of sweet paprika, we got a heap teaspoon of pepper, um, a heap teaspoon of salt, a heap teaspoon of bicarb of soda, and you add the bicarb of soda to sort of hold the whole mixture together, otherwise it sort of falls apart. And I've added just a little pinch of um, dry thyme um, in there as well. Um, it, it is quite a sort of a strong flavor. That's why I don't like to add much. Just, just, just a little bit. Now, what else the recipe requires is uh, 300 mils of, um, of concentrated beef stock. Um, so what I use is um, I use the, the Vegeta um, beef stock. So I, I just mix that in. And um, the, the recipe is usually made with three or four cloves of garlic. Um, I don't think that's anywhere near enough. So I usually put like a whole tablespoon, heaped tablespoon of garlic because I love the flavor. So let's get stuck into it. All right, guys. So why don't we start uh, mixing it all up? So we get the, the pork mince. Followed by the two lots of beef mince. Okay, so we've got the mince in there. Now, as I said about the uh, the, the the teaspoon of salt heap teaspoon of pepper, very heap teaspoon of sweet paprika, uh, a little bit of thyme leaves and the um, good um, bicarb of soda that, that holds the whole thing together. Right, now the all important garlic. This makes it taste orgasmic guys. So as I said, like a decent, decent, maybe we'll add a bit more. Maybe make it like a tablespoon and a half of garlic. There you go, right there. Now, 
<clears throat> the the beef stock. Now this is quite salty as well, so that's why we have to be careful just how much um, salt we add in the in, in the mixture because otherwise it, it ends up being a bit too salty. So we'll just there you go, that about two and a half teaspoons will do. Stir it up. Now, ideally, what you guys want to use here is one of those stand electric mixers. Um, I don't have one, so um, I got to do it by uh, by hand. All right, so that's nice and stirred. Right, so. Now, the, because I don't have the mix, I said you really sort of got to get, got to get stuck right into it. Got to get stuck right into it. I wish I had a stand mixer. I was looking at uh, buying one over the years, but you know, when you look at the price of a proper one, you think, wow, they're, they're certainly not cheap, but I guess like, like most things in life, you know, if you, if you want the quality, you got to, you know, sort of cough up the money for it. All right. Now, with the um, with the, the the beef stock, what we do is we sort of add bits at a time. You don't add the whole lot at once, so you just sort of add it in. I don't know, like say four goes or something. You got to mix it up, probably for a solid, you know, five to ten minutes, I guess. Really, really want to make sure that all the 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 flavors and everything mixes in properly. Right, got a bit more of this. There you go. Now, <clears throat> the recipe that I'm using is a is a recipe that I found quite a number of years ago on online, courtesy of Google. Now, like, guess like most recipes, you know, they um, they, they, there's many different versions, and. Uh, you know, I, I tried a few different versions until I, I, I came across this one. And I think this one's absolutely nailed it. Every time I, I eat this, it, it takes me back to, you know, to my childhood. <clears throat> As I said, uh, you know, this is the sort of, sort of, um, you know, the, the sort of street food that I, um, you know, I, I grew up on. Very popular over there. Everybody eats it. Right. Wish I had a stand mixer. Now, the only issue is doing it by hand is my hand is absolutely freezing because everything was cold out of the fridge. So my hand, yeah, it actually it's sort of beginning to hurt now. It's that cold. All right, that'll do. That's the rest of that. But yeah, look, if you guys like, um, you know, a sausage that is is packed with 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 flavor. I mean, this is definitely the one to uh, to try, guys, because it's it truly is orgasmic. Tons and tons and tons of flavor. All right, guys. Well, I'll keep mixing this for another maybe another five minutes or so, and uh, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, I think this is just about done. Now, you know that the mixture is right. So you pick it up like that, and it doesn't actually sort of fall down at all. So it's, it's, it's nice and, and formed and, and, and solid. So it just sort of sticks to you. So now you know that the mixture is, uh, is done right. All right, guys, so when you finished mixing it properly, what you want to do, and this is very important, you want to Put it like in a, in a bag like this um, and you want to seal it all up so there's no air in it uh, and it's very very important to let this rest in the in the fridge overnight um, you know the more you can leave it in the fridge the better because it, it all the flavors and everything mix and and, and infuse and um yeah it's it, it that tastes that much nicer gonna stick it though all right guys so now that the mixture is in the bag, you want to try and get, you know, all the air out of it. Ideally, all the air out of it. Get the 
air out. And then, once you get all the air, or as much of the air out of it, then seal it up. And once it's, once it's sealed up, then you just put it in the fridge, as I said, ideally overnight or, you know, as, as, as long as you can. So you, you give um, time for all the, the flavors to infuse. So um, we'll, uh, we'll give this, uh, well, I don't have overnight, but we'll, we'll give it a, a, a couple of hours and then uh, we'll be back with, with cooking it. See you guys in a bit. Hey guys, it's probably been uh, just over two hours now. Um, as I said, you know, you're better off leaving this mixture in the fridge overnight, but honestly, I'm, I'm starving and uh, I really couldn't wait too much longer. But what we're going to do now is we're going to start rolling it. So I got some um, baking paper. Right. <clears throat> now... The thing to remember this, it's a very sticky mixture. So what you have to do is, uh, is wet your hands first before you get stuck into it. All right, now that I've got wet hands. Now, the key is to not get it overly thick because it'll, it'll take longer to cook. So normally I get my wife to do this because she has loads of fun with um we're doing this. So as I said, when you've got wet hands, it doesn't tend to, um, to stick, which is good. So I say, yeah, just wet your hands after each, each one. Hopefully that's not too thick. Yeah, probably that's all right. Hopefully that'll be all right. Now, more water. The best thing to do is like if you guys have like a, a tiny little container and then you, you scoop the mixture up with that container so you know exactly, um, you know, have the same sort of um, quantity in each one. Uh, that way, you know that they'll cook probably too much there. You know that they'll they'll cook um, evenly. So, yeah, I, I should have had a even like a measuring cup or something like one of those half a cups or, or something like that. That'll do. So. It's probably getting a little bit big there. <laughs> yeah, without water though, this would be impossible. It would stick to your hands. Yep, no, definitely, definitely need that water between each, each roll. It's probably getting a bit big now, but how many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that'll probably do. I'll wash my hands and then we'll get cooking. See you guys in a bit. All right, guys. Now, let's put some oil in the frying pan. Ideally, you want to do this over a barbecue, but the barbecue is downstairs and I really can't be bothered. Child lock. All right, so get some oil in the in the frying pan here. We'll let that heat up for a minute. But yeah, definitely on the barbecue, it tastes the best. Definitely, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Right. Now again, we're aiming for a medium sort of a heat. Because if it's, if the heat's too high, the outside will obviously burn and the inside won't cook properly. So um, yeah, ideally, yeah, sort of halfway. All right, now. Let's, oh, they stick to the paper, there you go. 
Okay, guys, I think they're done. They still feel a bit squishy. Right. Now, turn that off. Oh wow, that all to the side. All right, guys, all cooked here. Oh, the smell, fantastic. Now, traditionally this is eaten with, uh, with mustard and a, and a crunchy baguette. Um, I, I don't have a crunchy baguette now, so we'll, we'll, we'll skip on that, but we'll add some, uh, some mustard here. This is just a sweet, Sort of normal mustard. I do like a bit of um a bit of spiciness, but we don't have that today. Anyway, let's try with the mustard first. Mmm. Wow. Check that out, guys. Absolutely cooked to perfection. Oh, so juicy and and so much flavor. Mm. Wow, now try with the mustard. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. If you guys are a fan of, 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 of sausages that pack a hell of a lot of flavor, make sure you try these out. And let me know what you think. Mmm, that is absolutely unbelievable, guys. Absolutely unbelievable. Mmm. As I mentioned earlier, if you guys, um, you know, have a, a recipe of, of, of sausages or, or anything else, actually, that you think packs a ton of flavor, by all means, um, let me know in the comments below. Send me a message, whatever you want. Contact me on Facebook. And, uh, and and share that recipe with me, please, because I'm, I'm definitely always up for trying new things, especially new things that pack a hell of a lot of flavor. Oh, yeah. Absolutely cooked to perfection. I actually nailed them this time. In the past, I've undercooked them, I've overcooked them, but this time, yeah, perfection. Definitely 10 out of 10. Mmm. Brilliant. And on that note, we're going to wrap it up for today, guys. Thank you very much for joining me again. See you guys next time. And remember, never trust a skinny food critic. Mm. Wow. <laughs>